Hi, I'm Tony Maserati, and I'm here today to talk about the Waves Abbey Road RS124 compressor. I've been using it in, in the analog world and putting it on vocals from Ed Sheeran to Beyonce, basses, guitars, lots of different things. I've been lucky enough to use the original Abbey Road version as well as the Chandler version. Both are pretty amazing analog compressors. What I really love about the RS124 is that they're great for keeping the excitement up, even when the dynamic is lower. You know, if, I, if I'm on a vocal, you'll hear some breathing or just lower level singing. This kind of stuff adds to the excitement. But what's different about it is it doesn't remove all the dynamic. This sort of just plays with the, the dynamic of the audio and allows it to fluctuate in a more natural way. And I'm sure that's why when they were created in the 60s at Abbey Road, everybody loved them so much. Let's look at some of the basics. As you can see here, it's got a fixed attack. It's a slow attack. Not turtle slow, but it's slow. But I've got some control of the recovery time which is very, very important to me. And then I've got some variations in what the analog unit had on it. You can view an expanded view and you can add a sidechain filter on there so it doesn't react to lower frequencies and it doesn't affect the threshold. You can also mix it, which is just great. I always love a mix, a mix knob on my plugins because it allows me to blend the natural sound with the affected sound. So I'm going to, to jump in here and do a little bit of demonstration. I've got the RS-124 on, on quite a number of instruments here, and I've got it on the main bass, a stereo bass, so I'm gonna keep it on stereo, but I can also set it in dual mono here, or I can set it in, in MS. Maybe I wanna, I wanna include a little bit of a filter there so the threshold doesn't grab too much of that low end. So we'll just listen to the bass. Okay, you can hear the reduction in the low frequencies because I want this bass to sit a little higher. I want to be able to raise it in the mix, but you can hear that it also kind of glues the whole package together, all the frequencies together, um, which is also what I'm looking for here. Now let's play it in the track. I want to play it in the uh, the acoustic guitar as well. I have the Superfuse involved, something on the analog unit that Chandler makes. I just always like the excitement that it brings on my units. I also want to demonstrate the difference between the cutter setting and the studio setting. Very, very subtle difference. I find that the cutter setting is slightly darker uh, than the studio setting. And let's just listen to this. The one where the input level is lower, I can hear more dynamic, right? And then the one where I'm pushing the input level, lowering the out, and it, you can hear it's being held up. There's sort of a feathery top end in the one where I'm pushing it harder. You hear more of the pick in the other one. 
You hear more of the against the strings in, in the one where I'm pushing it less. And these are subtle things, but you know that level of subtlety is, is what we deal with. This is the way that I use the one, two, fours on a mix bus. I'm not looking for my main mix bus to do anything dramatic. I do use them on a parallel mix bus, trying to create a little bit of level, holding level, as well as a little bit of pumping and breathing. It's quite subtle and lovely, which is wonderful. It's exactly what I'm looking for. You can see I've got a little bit of um, maximization going on. And then the RS-124, again, I'm just using it to kind of hold up things. Check mark out of boxes, made back all my losses. You who I'd be if I was not me. It's holding up the lower level signals. In this case, of course, it's changing a lot of the attacks of that stuff, but I don't mind because I've got this is this is sort of a, a secondary mix bus. I, I run this at a very low level, um, so I'll bring this down somewhere around 10, minus 10, and then I've got my main mix bus on top of that. It holds up those notes in some of the guitars, but it doesn't change the overall attack. So this is the way that I use it on a mix bus, this Waves RS-124. What I really love about this, the folks who made these things in the 60s knew what they were doing. And they knew, they knew why they were doing it. And they knew what it did to the listener and how it enhanced the performer. My job is to enhance that performance. So I'm using the same tools that they used. I'm using it on, on all the artists I'm working on currently. I think you all should, uh, should give it a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah.